powerful collaborations, cutting edge science, and curious minds coming together for a glimpse of the future. Stay tuned as we look at the latest updates on some of the most promising technology projects. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Peter Ballant from Technicon. The Aquarius Project is all about clean water. In the last two podcasts, we learned that the main goal in this effort was to develop new technologies to look for contaminants in water at the source, not in a lab. In this way, constant monitoring can take place online and inline rather than remotely. In today's episode, we speak with Joop van der Broeke from project partner KWR. KWR is a research institute in the Netherlands serving, among others, the Dutch drinking water utilities. Joop and his team are currently in the process of evaluating the sensor that has come out of Aquarius. And you're basically putting the prototype to the test. Welcome to the podcast and thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Anyone who looks at the Aquarius Project website could see that this project is about clean water, but clean water for whom? That's a good question. If we look at the Aquarius Project, I think there's a number of different types of interested parties in clean water. So the sensor that Aquarius is ultimately uh, striving to develop is a sensor that can detect oil in water. And there's a number of different, I would say, end users for this product. So on the one hand, and you can also see that when you look at the parties involved in the project. So oil in water is, of course, something that is relevant for industrial companies that are active in the oil sector. So when oil is produced or when you have a refinery, a lot of water is used in the process of producing the oil of, of extracting it from the ground or making a refined products. And that water needs to be cleaned before it can be discharged either to a sewer system or the environment. And of course, the oil companies have to uh, to monitor the quality of the water that they discharge. Otherwise, they can be fined if, if it's contaminated. So there is an interest from that sector being able to monitor their quality of the water. But then we're talking about typically about industrial process water or wastewater. So that's not necessarily clean water, but it is uh, about making sure it's not more contaminated than is allowed by legislation. On the other hand, we have, of course, more an environmental perspective, or in the case that drinking water is produced from river water or lake water, there is an interest from drinking water utilities in ensuring that the water does not contain any traces of oils which can be there because of various reasons. So there could be a small gasoline spill, or if they're shipping on a river, there can be a small spill from a ship or things like that. Um, Or you could have a bigger industrial incident that results in an an oil spill. And of course, you want to be able to uh, protect your drinking water intake, or uh, if, if it's an environmental application, you want to make sure that if something like this happens, that you detect it quickly and you can take countermeasures. So from the clean water perspective, there's a number of different angles and both of them, so both the industrial angle as well as the the really clean water angle, in this case, the drinking water angle are uh, are looked at in this this project. Okay, so Aquarius, basically the beneficiaries are um, industry and the consumer, you know, the people that are consuming the water. Ultimately, yes. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. ultimately, of course, if you talk about drinking water, but also the environment, it is the, the the general citizen that is the beneficiary. Yeah. Okay. And you talk about a sensor and the Aquarius project is a rather ambitious endeavor because something is coming out of it or has come out of it, um, the sensor. And this is a physical thing that came from the project. That's not all theoretical. So what can you tell us about the sensor? It's it's true when you say that the project is is quite ambitious. So let me explain a little bit about that. Typically, if you look at development projects, at least in the context of a European research project like this one, most of them are either focused on the development of a new technology, so more fundamental research, or they are um, looking at demonstration and implementation of a technology that is a bit more advanced. So where a prototype already exists, and then you try to bring it to the market and replicate the, uh, the benefits from the technology. 
if you look at the Aquarius project, really we start at quite a fundamental level with the development. Uh, in, in these projects, you have something called a technology readiness level, which indicates at what state of development your technology is. And for Aquarius, I believe that the, the starting TRL level was set at number three, which means uh, there's really not, not, not much more than a... Uh, a demonstrator, a proof of concept to start with. But the goal is to bring it to TRL level number seven, which means it has been demonstrated and used in a real life environment. So it's almost ready to go to be to be turned into a, a commercial product. And that's quite a, a big development over the course of what was initially meant to be a three-year project. We have gotten a bit of extension because of some delays due to the, the corona crisis. This was quite ambitious. So included in the whole trajectory were the development of the fundamental building blocks of the sensor. So we are trying to develop a, a laser which can be tuned so we can measure at different wavelengths, different colors, so to say, uh, but then in the infrared uh, spectrum, um, a matching uh, detector, a spectrophotometer that can detect the intensity of the light at those different wavelengths. Uh, and that's really necessary to be able to detect the oils, but also to be specific for the oil uh, in the water. And then there is also a, a concentrator unit which extracts the oil from the water to ensure that we have good sensitivity. And then, of course, there is integrating all these components into the analyzer or the sensor itself and then the testing in the field. So there's a lot of different steps involved in this process. And you say testing in the field, and this is where your company, KWR, comes in. You are currently testing this sensor. What is that like? So indeed, so KWR, maybe a few words about who we are. So KWR is a research institute from the Netherlands. We are basically the Dutch Drinking Water Institute. Dutch Drinking Water Research Institute. So we do a lot of research for the Dutch drinking water utilities. Uh, not exclusively, we also do some other work, but that's really an important part of what we do. And in the project, we basically we represent the end users, in this case being drinking water utilities, towards the application of the sensor. So in the project, we have the role of acting on behalf of the end users, we were involved in the specification. So initially uh, setting the criteria, what does this sensor have to meet? What does it have to do in order to be useful for this type of end user? So drinking water utility. Um, and now that at the end of the project, uh, so the project is, uh, is finishing at the end of this year. So uh, end of 2020. Um, at the end of the project, we take on the role of assessing the performance of the system that was developed. And uh, we've done that over the course of this year. So in the beginning of the year, uh, we had the sensor in our uh, laboratory. So we have, uh, at KWR, we have quite some experience in, in testing and assessing sensor technology. Uh, we have a well-equipped lab, so we can also do reference uh, analyses, so we can really assess how a system is performing and, and compare that to uh, the experience that we have with other instruments. So we did the, the lab testing in the beginning of the year. We had planned to do a test in the field, so under the same conditions that you would also see when you when an what utility uses the system. We had planned to do that in April and May, but we couldn't because the uh, we had an agreement with the water utility in the Netherlands that we could use their facilities, but the facilities were, were uh, closed to uh, non-company personnel because of the, the lockdown that we had. All uh, right. So this was shifted and uh, the project got extended, as, as, as mentioned before. So we are now in the process of, of doing that field trial at a, Dutch water utility, which is actually uh, quite close to where our office is located. So the, the instrument is installed in a monitoring station that is operated by that utility. And that's really a, a point where they take water from the River Rhine into their treatment facility. And of course, they, they have a number of systems there that monitor the water quality to ensure that it's not contaminated before they process it into drinking water. And it sounds like KWR is very well equipped to be conducting these tests and to give some kind of meaningful feedback to draw a conclusion to this project in general. We talk about this sensor. Is this close to market or how many years out do you think we are? Or are you able to even estimate this? 
And that's, that's always very difficult to say. So I should say that a number of the components that are in the sensor that we are currently testing are already available commercially. So they are integrated in commercial products from one of the project partners, QuantaRed. They already sell oil and water sensors, but they have sensors that are used in the, in the laboratory. So they don't have sensors yet uh, for the continuous monitoring of oil and water. And that's what this project is all about, about developing a sensor that can continuously, so every half a minute or every minute, maybe every five minutes, but very high frequency, uh, sample the water and then analyze it for the presence of water. And that's also what is really necessary if you want to do something like intake protection or monitoring the effluent of uh, an industrial site, for example. And the number, so in our tests, we have seen that a number of these components work well. So for example, the extraction unit that takes the oil, uh, extracts the oil from the water. So to increase the sensitivity of the, of the sensor unit basically works very well. It might need some more work to turn this into a real commercial product. On the other hand, we see that the, and those were also the more challenging developments in the projects. So the, uh, the, the tunable laser, so the tunable light source, and also the detector, these need more work still. Uh, so the main thing that we see is that continuously operate these systems means they have to be very robust. So you cannot have overheating, you cannot have issues with software that is not entirely reliable um, and I, th I think it's safe to say that in this project we are really still at the prototype stage how long it would take before this is a commercial product uh, that's hard to say that, that could take one year could take two years uh, from my own experience with similar uh, processes it could even take five years um, I, th I think what is good to say is that the basic performance that we have seen is pretty good. So uh, in our lab tests, we have seen the system is able to detect hydrocarbons, so oil type of products down to the low milligram per liter concentration level. That's typically the range that we are looking for if you, if you talk about the applications mentioned before. If you would really want to measure in drinking water itself, of course, you need to be more sensitive. But for the type of uh, surface water monitoring, uh, wastewater monitoring, this should be good enough. Um, we have seen that the reliability of the prototype that we have is okay. So it needs attention once every couple of days. But ultimately, you would want a unit like this to operate standalone without maintenance for oh, one, two weeks, maybe a month, maybe even two months. And that's not where we are yet. So uh, some more work needs to be done. But the, the basis is there, I think. It, it looks very promising. Yeah, that sounds great, actually. Now, you mentioned earlier that the way that they used to do this was take water from the source and take it to a lab. Not having to do that anymore seems like a huge advantage with the sensor that comes out of Aquarius. Is that the biggest advantage, or can you name any other important points that give Aquarius and the results from Aquarius a high value? There's really two main benefits, I think, from the developments in the project. So one is the continuous monitoring. So indeed, not having to take a sample, uh, so a grab sample, put it in a bottle, and then you bring it to a laboratory which might be on site if we talk about uh, an industrial location where typically there are facilities to analyze uh, samples like that. But for environmental monitoring, typically uh, you would take the sample to a lab. There it would be stored until they have enough samples to perform the analysis, which might be the next day or it might be a month later. So basically what you get then is you get information about one specific point in time and you have no idea what happened with the water quality between those samples and this is where the Aquarius sensor can really help to get a continuous impression of what is happening in a water system so that's one thing the other thing that's really new with Aquarius is that we will have a relatively ultimately of course when we talk about the commercial product a relatively affordable system that can say something about the nature of the compounds in the water. So the idea with the Aquarius is, I mentioned the tunable uh, laser before, so something that can measure uh, at different 
wavelengths, different colors in the infrared, and that allows us to actually look for specific chemical structures, and that helps us identify what is in the water. Whereas if we look at the technology that we have available today, this either means having a very advanced system, which is a lot more expensive than, than the Aquarius system will ever be, or it means a very tedious procedure in the lab where you actually separate all the different components and then you can identify them one by one, but not in the mixture. And the idea with the, the Aquarius project is really with this, this sensor is that directly in the field, we can already say something about the different types of substances that are in present in the water. So that would be a, a really big step forwards. There is technology that can do this, that, but not for this type of substances, not for not for oils, not for hydrocarbons in the water. Can you speak about the test results so far that you've experienced? Yeah, so the um, the instrument has been tested uh, at KWR, so at our our lab in the spring of this year. What we tested for during that first series of of, of experiments was really the performance of the system. So we tested different solutions of chemical substances in water, so dissolved in very clean water, but also in drinking water. And then we tested how sensitive is the unit, um, is the unit producing reproducible results, meaning are the results that we measure on day one the same as the results that we get on, on the fifth day or the 10th day? What is the noise in the measurement? So how accurate uh, are the results? Is it if the unit says, uh, I read one milligram, is it then one milligram or could it also be five? So what, what is the variability in, in these results? Um, we also looked at the interference. So that's always important if you look at uh, measurements in, in real life. So uh, in, in surface water or in wastewater, you're n- never looking at one in individual substance. You're always talking about mixtures of, of hundreds, if not thousands of, of chemicals. So you also want to know if I detect substance A, am I then certain it is substance A or could it be something else as well? So this type of interference measurements is, is what we've done as well. And uh, we've seen that that for the the target substances, so the these oil-like substances, hydrocarbons, uh, we have found good sensitivity. So uh, one of the, let's say, indicator substances that we're working with is called octanol. And we saw that down to the low milligram per liter level. So this is really the sensitivity that you want to have if you talk about monitoring of river water or lake water or wastewater. Um, the results were very, very repeatable. That was good. We did see some effects, some interference from substances that are naturally present in, in uh, surface waters. Humic acids. Uh, so humic acids are breakdown products from plant materials. And we saw a bit of interference there, so uh, that's a, something that we are still investigating. So, how can we uh, eliminate that type of interference? But over, the overall performance was was quite satisfactory, and I think also the in terms of maintenance needs, it showed that we are on the right track. And then the uh, the field testing is ongoing at the moment, and it's it's something that we still need to uh, evaluate. So we'll be looking at that the last couple of weeks of the project to see how that how that went. Okay. And from KWR's perspective, or even your perspective, um, what does success look like in Aquarius? Well, there's many different levels of, of success, I think, that you can distinguish in a project like this. And the success will also be different for the different types of, of partners that are involved in the project. So speaking for KWR, so we have a number of things that, that, that we would call a success. So on the one hand, for ourselves as a research institute, we just want to know what is happening in the world uh, in terms of developments of water technology. So being part of this project gives us the opportunity to really work together with partners that are on the cutting edge of, of developing sensor technology. So I think that's that's already a big success for KWR to be involved in a project like this. Also, because our role towards our stakeholders, the Dutch drinking water utilities is really to be their eyes and ears when it comes to technology. So that's uh, that's already a, a good thing. Then ultimately, of course, a big success would be uh, a commercial oil and water sensor that has the properties that we discussed before. 
but for a project like this, uh, it can only provide a stepping stone for that type of success. So I, I think it's not realistic, would not have been realistic to expect a project like this to deliver a commercial product. That's also not the aim of these projects. It's it's really in assisting uh, in that, that process. Paving the way, I think. Paving the say. way, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And, and supporting uh, European companies in their competitiveness and, and of course, the, the supporting the European Union in its technology place in, in the world, so to say. Um, I, I think for some of the other, other partners, the developments that have been ongoing are also successful, like the development of the of the spectrophotometer, so the detector, the, the development of the, the light source. These are really new technologies. Uh, steps in performance have been made. So these are all individual successes. So there's many different levels uh, when you talk about success in a project mm -hmm. like this. Uh, and we have already talked about the consumer as a stakeholder in this project. Can you pinpoint other stakeholders? Yeah, there's a number of stakeholders involved in a project like this. I don't think Aquarius is unique in that sense. So if you look at water quality and water quality monitoring in general, then there's always a number of different parties involved that, that look at this from a different angle. So ultimately, of course, we as a society would like to have the best quality water possible. Uh, it could be environmental quality, um, ecological status. Uh, that's why we have the, the Water Framework Directive, for example, in Europe that, that obliges all the member states to obtain or to maintain good status of their, their natural waters. Uh, we want clean drinking water. So that's the really the, the citizen and societal uh, stakeholder perspective. There's the uh, organizations, the companies that, that produce water quality sensors. So their stake is commercial success, having a product that is competitive, that is interesting for the market that they can, can sell. And in the end, of course, it's again, the citizen that also benefits because it means there's jobs People can work at those companies. So there's also a societal uh, aspect there. And there's also stakeholders in the, in the form of, of companies that actually have an effect on the water quality. So in this, this particular project, we talked about the oil industry. So companies that produce something uh, that use water in their processes, uh, inevitably, inevitably that will lead to products, compounds, uh, things from their process ending up in their water so before they can discharge this they need to ensure that the water is again fit for um, being brought back into the natural environment so they have a, a stake as well uh, on the one hand to ensure that they uh, oblige the legislation but also uh, they have a treatment plant that needs to function so a water treatment plant where that that where they clean their wastewater. So these type of sensors are also used to optimize the performance of such a treatment plant, which can save them chemicals, which can save them electricity because their the treatment processes are more uh, efficient. And then another stakeholder that we should not forget are the legislators, are the, uh, the politicians, so to say. So the European Commission, uh, national governments or ministries, because they basically guards over our uh, our water quality. They make the laws that, that we all have to uh, follow. But of course, they can only tell us that water quality has to meet this and that criteria if it's possible to actually verify that we meet those criteria. So technology is also a driver or an influencer uh, of, of legislation. So there's a lot of different things that come together really in, in a project like this. And we try to address all of them uh, legislators are not actually part of the project, but we, we do reach out to them to tell them what is happening. And all the other parties are really at the table. So from the standpoint of the stakeholders, it looks like uh, Aquarius has produced some fine results. And uh, the project is actually over at the end of this year. So you're sort of in your final phases here. I, I want to say thank you for taking the time to tell us a little bit about Aquarius today. It's an interesting project. and. Sounds like a highly successful project. You're most welcome. If you'd like to see more about Aquarius, check out their website at aquarius-project.eu. This podcast has been brought to you by Technicon. 
the project leading to this application has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under grant agreement number 731465. This project is an initiative of the Photonics Public-Private Partnership.